The Seventh World Congress against the death penalty was held in Brussels. As you know, Brussels is the capital of uh, Europe, the administrative capital of Europe. And the event, uh, the opening of the event was uh, at the European Parliament. The support that we had from the Council of Europe and the European uh, countries was tremendous in uh, bringing us together at this uh, wonderful place. It's the largest death penalty uh, coalition of movements around the world and we share ideas um, amongst the coalition whenever every three years in fact uh, this congress is held and uh, I've been to most of the congresses over the years and uh, we share ideas like for example new strategies um, on campaigning against death penalty and uh, new legal challenges being done by other lawyers around the world who are there to sh share their experiences. Um, the strength of uh, support by the European Union in this, um, in this Congress is significant because Europe is a trading partner of most of, is the biggest trading partner of most of the countries and uh, Europe has a lot of influence uh, in its economic uh, relations with other countries in putting anti-death penalty on its uh, agenda. Every um, Congress which is held every three years, we have a protest march. It's called Abolition March. It will, it will be held in the main city center. So this time in the Brussels city, we, we, were, we went to a particular place, and then from there we marched across the street of Brussels, uh, shouting slogans for the abolition of the death penalty. There was a time when uh, people were wondering, you know, whether this movement of death penalty abolition will, uh, will be worldwide. Uh, and there was a lot of skepticism that was 30 years ago. It, initially it was one third of the world, now it's, um, I mean, then it was half the world, then two third, I mean, and now it's reaching almost three quarter of the world, which is opposed to death penalty. I would say that the momentum of the abolition around the world is growing. For example, if you have like, in, in East Africa, if you have a particular country abolishing death penalty, it has a spillover effect on, on the other countries and we are already seeing a lot of legal challenges which are already currently taking place. During the Congress, we also hear constantly news being shared by Minister of Justice or the former attorney, or the Attorney General of that country coming down to announce the abolition of the death penalty at the Congress itself and share the good news. So each time I go to a Congress, we, we have at least three countries coming there to three or four countries coming there to announce the abolition of the death penalty and it is increasing. Currently I have been in, I'm involved in the death penalty legal challenge in Tanzania by the Tanzania Human Rights uh, Center and um, I'm working closely with the uh, lawyer um, Puljins Masawe um, and also the death penalty from death penalty project from London whom we have had support in Singapore over the years in terms of some of the legal challenges are also actively involved in supporting the legal challenge in Tanzania. So I really hope that um, there will be some positive result. Uh, I understand that the hearing has been urgent and, and, and I've been involved in this challenge for the last uh, three years. Death penalty by the state, which is state engineered murder, is the most premeditated murder of its kind. We, the world has moved to find out better to to find out better to find better solutions to handle this and hence most of them have abolished death penalty see every moment there is a moment of hope even up to the last uh, second at 5:59 and i mean 5:59 the last minute i mean if, if up to that stage we hope that maybe perhaps the president might reverse the stand or there could be some intervention in that last minute hope and that hope intensifies because we we we, we have faith in humanity at the end of the day um, i have been involved in a uh, death penalty campaign for more than 15 years now when the first when the first campaign that i did that was in 2003 bbc um, report revealed that singapore and also amnesty international's uh, research revealed that singapore in 2003 2004 had the highest execution per capita and we continued I, I mean I, I mean I started this campaign together with others and the momentum built up over the years in 2010 when the case of Yong Wee Kong came Singapore had zero execution 
and thereafter the constitutional challenges and the campaign that was uh, mounted on behalf of Wee Kong, um, we had a reprieve of uh, about, not reprieve, we had a moratorium for about two years and no one was executed. And then but there was a change, change in the law. And it is still not satisfactory. I mean, just because there was a, this, <coughs> there is this, um, this is only a partial development uh, towards um, the rectifying the defects in the, the current death penalty regime. But I hope that um, the momentum will move on towards uh, total abolition.